All right, folks, our last part, uh, the Punnett squares we're going to do in the genetics unit involves sex-linked or X-linked traits, as you may see here on your screen. A couple things to keep in mind with these traits is that they do not appear on autosomes. Autosomes are the other 22 pairs of chromosomes. We're looking at the sex chromosomes and primarily the X chromosome. That's why they're called X-linked or sex-linked. So when we have sex-linked traits, they appear on the X chromosome. So we indicate these with X that tells us what type of chromosome we're looking at and then we use superscript either a big letter or a small letter to determine whether the trait is dominant or recessive. With a Y we just leave it as Y. This helps us determine gender as well as determining which genders might have certain traits that could be carried on to the next generation. All right, so we're going to look at this today just to get a clearer understanding of how sex-linked traits are inherited because they're a little bit different. They typically only appear, uh, appear you know, 95% of the time in males, and that just has to do with the fact that males are XY. So if we have the recessive allele, all right, we have the disorder. That is a, a you will have the recessive disorder there, but females can have the allele, but have it be masked by the dominant allele, all right? So men are more likely, much more likely, to get sex-linked genetic disorders than females because the females have another X chromosome that could mask the uh, recessive allele, all right? So let's do a little bit more work with this, and we will go from there. Let's do some practice problems, guys. First problem states that colorblindness is a sex-linked recessive trait, so sex-linked recessive trait. Jim is a colorblind male. Bethany is a normal female. What are the odds of having a child that is colorblind? What are the odds of being a carrier for the trait? So we have uh, child colorblind and then being a carrier. So we got a couple things we're going to look for here. First off, let's figure out what our parents are. We know that Jim is a colorblind male. Males are XY, females XX. So for this trait, let's say that colorblindness is little b because it's recessive, and that normal is big B. We have a normal female, two big B's there, in a male that is colorblind. You see what I did there? Do you see how I assigned the alleles? We have a normal female, so that's why she is big B, big B. All right, and then we have a colorblind male, so the male is going to have a little B. Notice that there is no allele on the Y because these are X-linked or sex-linked traits. And now we cross them, just like we would any other Punnett square. Break them down. I'm going to take some more time writing this because those big B's and little B's are really important to get right. All right. Now, what are the odds of having a child that is colorblind? Remember, colorblind is a recessive trait. Are there any of those offspring that will be colorblind? And the answer, no, 0% are going to be colorblind. In order to be colorblind, you have to have one, you have to have the recessive allele if you're male, or both recessive alleles if you're female, and none of those occur. Notice that this person will have normal vision, normal vision because they have the dominant trait, same with this and this. These two individuals at the top are heterozygous females, and the ones at the bottom are homozygous dominant males. Two, what are the odds of being a carrier for the trait? Carrier, right, if you remember, means that they are heterozygous. So, 
there are two individuals that are heterozygous, right? We have this one and this one. So those two are heterozygous. We have a 50% chance of being a carrier for the trait. Both females will be carriers. No males will, ca males cannot be carriers, and males, uh, the males here will not exhibit the trait. All right, it's a little bit more confusing. You need to understand the concept of sex determination, right? XX female, XY male, and just understand that the males will only have one allele. That allele determines if they have the trait or not. Females can be homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive, and heterozygous. Okay, let's move on to another practice problem. Stephanie is a colorblind female. Bob is a normal male. What are the odds of having a colorblind male child and a colorblind female child? So we're breaking it down even further into male and female. You'll see what I mean here in a minute. Let's set up our Punnett square. We've got female and male. We have a colorblind female. She must be recessive for both alleles, and Bob is normal, so he will be dominant. All right? Same as before. Same traits. We're just going to go through and do the Punnett square now. And cross. All right, question one. What are the odds of having a colorblind male child? Now notice, first off, how many of these are male? All right, there are only two. There are only two offspring here that are male, these two down here at the bottom. What are the odds of having a colorblind male child? This one's colorblind and this one. So the odds are 100%. Notice and make sure you understand that it's asking for male. The second question is asking for female. So make sure that when it asks for gender-specific answers, you give them that are gender-specific. Colorblind female... 0%. However, both of these are carriers. Okay? Lastly, Jacob is a colorblind male and Rachel is a carrier female. What are the odds of having a colorblind male child and colorblind female? So, go through this again. Jacob is a colorblind male. Rachel is a carrier female. Having a colorblind male child or colorblind female? Take it one step at a time. We got a colorblind male. Remember, male is XY. Female XX. Colorblind male, little b. Carrier female, big B, little b, right? She's a carrier. She doesn't exhibit the disorder, but she carries the trait for it. Cross them and determine your offspring. Okay. What are the odds of having a colorblind male child? You have two males here. Which, how many will be colorblind? This one right here. So, one out of two. 50%. Colorblind female. These two are female. One of them is colorblind. 50%. Okay? So, again... The real key here is making sure that you use your sex chromosomes to determine gender and being uh, able to determine dominant recessive alleles, all the stuff that we've talked about before. It's just a little bit different with the sex chromosomes. All right, let's talk about this a little bit later. Work on the practice problems. If you have any questions, let me know. Have a great day, guys. We'll talk to you later.